What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We like magic, and all of Amonkhet is officially spoiled. Every single card in the stinking thing is now available for you to see on various spoiler sites. I'll give you a link down there in the description, so make sure you check that out. But since there were like 100 cards spoiled today, I can't go through all of them. So what I'm going to do is give you my top 15 cards from today. Quick caveat before I get to the list here. The criteria for the list is based solely upon constructed playability. So if a card is like insanely good and limited, it may not have been considered for the list. I'm looking strictly at constructed playability here. So let's go ahead and get to the list and remember to like the video if you enjoy the video. Let's go. Well, you know how my lists work. I got to do an honorable mention for them. So my honorable mention for this list is Gate to the Afterlife. Let me show you this thing right here. Gate to the Afterlife is three mana for an artifact. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you gain a life. Then you can loot. You draw a card and if you do, you discard a card. You can also pay two and tap it to sacrifice it. Search your graveyard, hand, and or library for a card named God Pharaoh's Gift and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Activate this ability only if there are six or more creature cards in your graveyard. Okay, so there are things to like and not like about this card, you know. Gaining a life and looting whenever a creature dies is great, but I hate the word non-token on it. And I kind of hate that it costs three mana, although it could see some commander play, especially considering it goes and gets another card from your library. But that is why it's an honorable mention. We don't know what that card is yet, and we probably won't know, obviously, until Hour of Devastation. We also didn't see Nicol Bolas today. So they won't see him until the next set either. A lot of mystery heading into Hour of Devastation. And this is one of them. What the heck? What is that? <laughs> what is God Pharaoh's gift, you know? Um, but once we do see it, this card will probably see good play in Commander just because it'll help you go and get what will probably be a pretty darn powerful card just straight out of your deck as long as you got six guys in your yard. Which again, in Commander, probably not that hard. So I like the loots. I like gaining the life. But as far as like actual non-Commander constructed play... Uh, probably not because three mana is a lot and non-token probably hurts a little bit. The first actual card on the real list here, number 15, is a card that I wasn't going to originally put on the list but then I realized I was looking at it for too long <laughs> to not put it on the list. Here's Initiate's Companion right here. It's two mana, one and a green for a 3-1 cap and that probably helped it make the list too. Whenever Initiate's Companion deals combat damage to a player, untap target creature or land. Two mana three ones are a little bit more common nowadays, but they used to be a thing you never saw. Like we saw like a vanilla two mana three one in Future Sight and it like blew our freaking minds. <laughs> like this is really nice to see. And just like Blade of the Six Pride from Future Sight, it is also a cap. That's a two mana three one little callback to Blade back uh, right there. But in any case, I just like that this has a good amount of play on it. Getting through for combat damage is not something that this is going to always do. So that tempers the playability a good bit. But when it does get through for combat damage, the, the floor on it is that it untaps itself. Like it gives itself vigilance if it gets through for combat damage. You can also untap an exert creature or a mana guy, hold up blossoming defense or hold up a blue one mana counter spell or something. You never know. So there's a good amount of play on this card, but having to get through for combat damage is kind of sucky. But hey, even, you know, considering that, it's a two mana three one, which is still okay. My number 14 is a card I might get beat up if I didn't put on the list, <laughs> to be honest. I think a lot of people are probably kind of excited about this card. I'm not really sure what to make of it, but still, here's compelling argument right here. And I think there is a compelling argument for this card. And I'm probably the millionth YouTuber to make that joke today, so I should win some kind of prize. But compelling argument is two mana, one in a blue for a sorcery. Target player puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, and you can cycle it for one blue. Well, as far as cards like this go, this is a pretty good one, you know, because you can also just pay a blue and draw a card. Like, paying a blue to draw a card at instant speed is good. <laughs> It's probably just good. So, you know, when you've also got the ability to mill your opponent for five or maybe put five cards in your graveyard if you're playing Reanimator or Delirium or whatever you're doing with your funky deck, you know, you could, you could play this and it doesn't seem too god-awful, you know. It's not like completely dead ever, which is nice. My numbers 13 and 12 are both green ramp creatures. I just want to put them together right here. This is Weaver of Currents and Naga Vitalist here. A Weaver of Currents is three mana, one a green and a blue for a 2-2 Naga Druid, and you can tap it for two colorless mana. Naga Vitalist is two mana, one and a green for a 1-2 Naga Druid as well, and you can tap it to add to your mana pool one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. 
Uh, we've been talking about um, a Cynic ramp deck ever since we saw that Nissa the other day. And Weaver of Currents looks at least decent for it, you know, as long as you get all your drops. It guarantees six mana by turn four, which is nice. And if you got a Mana Dork on turn two, which certainly isn't hard to do, we see one right here, then you'll have seven mana by turn four. And this is maybe one of the easiest ways to get seven by turn four. You can cast Nissa for five, which seems pretty decent, or you could do a bevy of other things. There's a million things you can do with seven mana on turn four in this format. You cast like World Breaker, that seems pretty decent too. So, Cynic Ramp is looking nice. I'm not actually sure it'll play Vitalis, because it's already got Servant of the Conduit, it's got um, Channeler Initiate. There's a couple of probably better cards you could play for two mana that ramp you. Um, but at the same time, this will help you get double mana costs off and stuff like that. So I think that Vitalis is at least worth a mention, especially considering that it too is common and could see popper play for that reason. Now for numbers 11 and 10, I'm going to double up just like I did with those two ram creatures here. There were actually three black one drops from today that I think are like of some sort of note, at least worth, no, uh, worth mentioning at least. So I do think one is a cut above the rest, but here's the other two right here, Festering Mummy and Ruthless Sniper. A Festering Mummy is a black mana for a 1-1 one, one zombie, and when it dies, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Ruthless Sniper is also just a black mana for a 1-2 human archer. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. As far as Festering Mummy goes, there are an awful lot of one-drop zombies that we already want to play. You know, we saw um, Dread Wanderer, I think it was, the other day. We want to play that. We also want to play um, Crypt Breaker still, I would imagine. So I'm not actually sure this sees a bunch of play, but all of these zombies decks look like, look like right now. They want to be some sort of Aristocrats deck, so this will be very easy to make die, obviously. Um, and it puts a counter on a creature, which I actually think is nice. Festering Goblin already isn't the absolute worst card, and this has, just like Goblin, a decent creature type, and puts a counter on a creature, which is just way, way better. Especially in this format, where we see a lot of uh, synergies with minus one, minus one counters. You know, we have a Patra right now, um, which is probably the most important thing, because we want to play a one-drop that synergizes with a Patra, and both of these can do that pretty well. But number nine, I'm not actually sure we'll see play but it's just so good looking so let's take a look at honored crop captain right here this is two mana a red and a white it's boros colors for a three two human warrior whenever honored crop captain attacks other attacking creatures get plus one plus oh until end of turn that seems good like a two mana three two that gives your other attacking guys a, a boost that's exactly what aggro decks usually want this seems um pretty good with hamward garrison or any token strategy for that matter if you go wide this card looks fantastic you know um, anything with like Relentless, uh, Reckless Bushwhacker, maybe, because those go slightly wide in the first couple of turns. Um, I just, I like the card. I'm not sure Boros Aggro will be exactly where we want to be, but I'm not sure it won't be either. This is also a good two drop for the, you know, the, the funny, the, the equipments deck that already plays a two mana three two that boosts our guys. You know, it already plays Weapons Trainer. This is just sort of another copy of it for that red white equipments deck. So, and in a deck that, like, th I like that this is a two drop with three power that boosts your guys because you can keep your curve extremely low and still have an anthem effect that has high power in and of itself. And yeah, it can be hit by shock, it can be hit by spray, it can be hit by fatal push. But it is just, pardon the pun, pushed enough that it might actually be worth trying out. My well, number eight is a card that when I first saw it, I started freaking out a little bit, and then I tried to, to temper my expectations. Then I started looking at comments and stuff, and I realized that a lot of other people are freaking out about it too, so I don't feel so bad, <laughs> right? My number eight is Faith of the Devoted right here. This is three mana, two, and a black for an enchantment. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. The other day I was asking, what is the end game for new perspectives? We still don't really know what it is outside of maybe like, Archfiend of Ifnir just kills other guys. I think that could be a thing right there. But what is the combo piece in game in that deck? And this might might be it. It's uh, it's sort of like our Astral Slide or our Lightning Rift in this set. It's the closest thing we're gonna get, so we'll take it. You know, um, it doesn't affect the board in any way like Slide does, and you know, Rift for that matter can kill creatures. But this doesn't do that. It does drain the opponent though, and although. Costing one mana and taking your third turn sucks. Like, those are things that might straight up kill this card. Costing three mana to cast, taking up a whole turn, and then costing one to keep it going and draining. Those things are bad. Be honest about that. Those things are bad. But 
if we do have a new perspective deck that ramps into perspectives or something, tries to play this on turn three, four, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But if that deck exists, then this is probably at least okay. You play your new perspectives, you say go, which I didn't want that deck to have to do. But if you can untap with perspectives and this on the battlefield, you can do a lot of work in just one turn. Especially with, what is it, Shadow of the Grave? Shadows of the Grave? You can do a lot of work with that card too and this. So, like, I just like the direction this card is going in. But again, I'm just not sure that it has the chops ultimately to make that deck be a thing. I hate having to pay a mana every time we cycle something. But if we didn't, then we could probably easily break the card. But I kind of want to. My number seven is yet another card that works with cycling and discarding and may go in new perspectives for all I know. But this one is either not that great and is being over-evaluated or... It's freaking incredible. So let's take a look at Shadowstone Vizier right here. This is two mana, a black and a blue for a 1-3 human cleric with flying. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, Vizier gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. On the surface, this reminds me an awful lot of this guy right here, you know. Um, only prowess and whenever you cycle or discard a card are two very, very different things. And I'm actually not sure how to evaluate this card. A lot of people are freaking out saying it's incredible. A lot of people are saying... Hold your horses. I, I, I'm not really sure. And there's a card or five <laughs> every spoiler season that's really difficult to evaluate. And I think that this is one of them this time around. If this card is good, then it's probably really, really, really good. But I mean, it might not be. It, it really might not be. Like, again, I'll say this one more time for... I think this might be the last time I mentioned this card in spoiler season, but in New Perspectives, if you go Archfiend of Ifnir turn 5, you've already got this on the battlefield, New Perspectives turn 6, then you can just cycle your entire hand, kill the other side of the board with Archfiend, and then swing over with for a bunch with this lady. So that, all of that seems at least decent. You know, you swing over with Archfiend and this with a huge boost, so you can end the game that way. Technically, I mean, that's, that's this is another way to end the game with New Perspectives. So there's that, and there's plenty of things in both Standard and Modern that we're going to play that have cycling, not just the lands. I mean, there's plenty of stuff that we'll play um, that has cycling, and there's many, many ways to discard cards, too, So, and that's probably what we're really looking at here. So let's just all keep a lookout for it. Let's do some testing and see how good it really is, though, before we lose our minds, because the card looks good, but we've been fooled before. My number six card in the day is here mostly because it's going to see a lot of commander play, but this could actually see mainstream standard play. I wouldn't put it past it, but I doubt it. But mostly because of Commander. Here's Open Into Wonder right here. It's two blue and X, sorcery. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn. Until end of turn, those creatures gain. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So we got to slip through space on massive steroids, <laughs> basically. You pay two blue X and whatever... You're putting into X is unblockable. You know, three guys are unblockable for five mana. That actually doesn't seem too bad. And you're almost guaranteed to draw three cards, provided they don't do any kind of, you know, removal during combat. And that's really good value, by the way. You just got, you know, a plus two in card advantage and some damage in. So that's like, all that seems nice. But in Commander, where you're making a bunch of mana and you're playing a bunch of creatures and you want to draw a bunch of cards, this thing is just tailor-made for that format. So... You know, I'm sure it's going to see all the play there. But even in standard, a competitive environment, I could see this trying to do a thing. Now, my number five probably shouldn't be as high on the list as those last two cards. To be honest with you, like like Shadowstone Vizier or whatever it is, that seems like it could probably be number five instead of this. But I'm already biased. I've, I've fiddled around with this card already a little bit just after having seen it very late last night. And I can tell you, I've, I'm kind of impressed so far. So... Let's check it out. This is Bloodlust Insider right here. It's a one mana, one one, just a red mana for a one one human warrior. Tap, target creature gains haste until end of turn. So in a super aggressive deck, this basically just gives your two and three drops haste, which is great. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. This sets you up in an aggressive deck to get haste drops in for the rest of the game if they don't remove it. And of course, you want your one drop to be pretty aggressive usually, but this speeds up the clock more than a one drop might usually unless that one drop is like Monastery Swift Spear or something. You know what I mean? But this will speed up the clock more than even a two power one drop will in a lot of bad situations. And there's cool turn sequences you can pull off right now with this in standard. Like for instance, you play this turn one, turn two you play Exemplar of Strength, and then you can put all the minus one, minus one counters on Insider, but while that ability is on the stack, you can go ahead and give the Exemplar haste. So 
four four haste swinging in on turn two is pretty nice. That's not bad. And you got a four four for the rest of the game too. So that's cool. There's other cool stuff you can do with this card in standard. I just really like the idea of a one drop that speeds up every single drop you play for the rest of the game. So I'm looking out for this card. There's already a bunch of one drops in red that we want to play. Um, so I'm not sure this ultimately makes the cut in like ultra aggressive mono red decks, but in decks that like red deck wins, for instance, decks that play four and five drops, maybe, maybe we'll have to wait and see. Well, number four is a card that's been getting a lot of attention today. And this is actually the other black one drop I was talking about. And this one could actually be like number one on the day. For all I know, this is a very good looking card to me and a lot of other people. This is bone picker right here. This is, I call it a black one drop because it's, it sort of is, but it's kind of not. It costs four mana. Three and a black for a 3-2 burr. Bone Picker costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. That's how you make it a one drop. And it's got flying and death touch. Okay, so everybody's comparing this to Delver of Secrets and wondering if it's going to see modern play, all of that. All things considered, Delver's usually a 3-2 flyer by turn two. This is a little bit harder to pull off than that necessarily. Um... But it still can be very often a 1-mana 3-2, at least in standard, especially alongside Fatal Push. We see a lot of aggressive strategies that seem to be blossoming here um, with Amonkhet. And there were already extremely aggressive strategies. Mardu Vehicles, probably the best deck in the format, right? So, you know, Fatal Push is already very easy to play, <laughs> even without having to revolt it. But it looks like with all these aggressive strategies we may see propping up um, right now, that Fatal Push will get even more playable. So Fatal Push is obviously what you want to do with this on turn two, but we've also got Shock. We've got, well, I was going to say Magma Spray, but that wouldn't work. But we've also got Shock in the format. So multiple ways, I think, to get this on turn two, and that's not even counting that you can swing in with your one drop, they trade with it or it dies, whatever, and then you'll play a 3-2 Flying Death Touch on your second main phase. Like, there are so many easy ways to get this just on turn two, not to mention turn three or four. It's still a decent card on turn three or four, and the death touch really matters. Delver is a straight up offensive creature. This can play offense or defense the same way Vampire Nighthawk can. And if I would be dumb if I didn't mention this, we see a bunch of Aristocrats builds that might be coming up too. So with Aristocrats being a thing, this definitely looks playable in those decks. Just gotta, gotta say, the card looks like easily one of the better cards in the entire day and could even see play in modern. It could happen. My number three will not see competitive play, but it is just the most straight-up hype commander card on the day. So I've got to show it to you. My number three is this right here, Avon Wind Guide, AWG Aug, right here. He's four mana, two, a white, and a blue for a 2-3 bird warrior with flying and vigilance. And creature tokens you control have flying and vigilance. And you can embalm this for six mana for a white and a blue. Here you go. Commander Tokens players, this is cool. This also works with Embalm, and like, when you Embalm it, it'll give itself extra flying and vigilance that don't actually matter. <laughs> so that's cool, you know. Um, but mostly, I really, really like this in Commander an awful lot, you know. Um, four mana for a 2-3 flying vigilance is not the worst thing in the world. It's not great stats either, but just the ability to give all of your creature tokens one really really good evasive ability and another ability that's really nice because you're playing against a bunch of other players and you'd like to be able to attack and still block <laughs> so you know vigilance is even better in in you know multiplayer games a lot of the time so this is just an absolute bomb for commander token strategies and i just had to point it out because it's, it's that good in those specific decks it is that good now, my number two is almost certainly going to surprise you, but I know some of you have probably been waiting on me to mention this card. And there are multiple cards that could possibly be better than this, like Bone Picker could be better. Um, what's her stupid name? Shadowstone Vizier could possibly be better. But just because I love what this card means for the format, I gotta put it at number two. This right here is Trespasser's Curse. Two mana, one and a black for an enchantment. It's an aura curse that enchants a player. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under enchanted players, enchanted players control, that player loses one life and you gain one life. 
Yet another answer to cat combo. Everyone was talking about Gideon's intervention is the answer, and yet yeah, it does answer cat combo. But I think this is even better, or at least as good. You know what I mean? Two mana is exactly where you want to be, you know? And that deck doesn't have a whole lot. Sahili, none of the Sahili decks have a whole lot of enchantment hate. They already don't like Authority of the Consoles, and this is just a way to do that in black, which I've been looking for. I've been making this Mono Black Zombies list for the last couple of days since we've been seeing some good zombies. Problem with that list is it has like no really good way of killing cat combo outside of like murder, you know, <laughs> or a revolted fatal push perhaps. Um, but this, this on the other hand, is a great answer to cat combo that by the way, if you went first, they don't have a whole lot of ways of answering. There are no like one blue counter spells that counter this in the format. So there's really not a whole lot they can do about it. You know, they can make cats if they want to, they'll just be killing themselves. <laughs> so that's cool. And it's not completely dead, even if you main deck it, which I don't know that I suggest, but hey, if you do main deck it, it's still pretty decent against token strategies. And there's other stuff that it does. Like, I kind of like the way this plays against Bitter Blossom, incidentally. So there's that. There's just, I think the card is actually really, really neat. I like it in Commander too. And I just really got to put it on the list at number two because it is a way for black only decks, which they didn't have before really to deal with cat combo forever. Like murder will work once until they play another Felidar Guardian. <laughs> you know, this card works all game until they deal with it, which they don't have a whole lot of ways of doing. So really, really, really love that we got this card today. My number one today is probably also a surprise, but it's got so many different ways of playing it and one specific way of playing it <laughs> that I think are really awesome. So I had to give it number one. I just had to. Number one is Vizier of Remedies right here. Vizier is two mana, one and a white for a two, one human cleric. If one or more minus one, minus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many minus one, minus one counters, minus one, are put on it instead. So the very first thing that you got to point out is that this works marvelously with persist creatures in modern to where they more or less never die. And yes, that does work with Kitchen Finks, Murderous Red Cap, whatever. The other thing you got to point out is that this goes infinite with any of those persist creatures and a free sack outlet like Nantuko Husk or whatever you're doing, you know. So as long as you have, say, a Husk and a Kitchen Finks, you're gaining infinite life. Husk, Murderous Red Cap. Dealing infinite damage, just an insanely easy way to set up infinite combos. Love that about it. Love that about it. And even in standard, it'll combat Hapatra strategies if they are actually a thing. Any minus one, minus one counters that become a thing, this will come out of the sideboard for you in standard. But the main thing that I'm happy about is these like three-piece infinite combos that are easily disruptable, all that. They're not cat combo or anything, but that's what I like about them. They're fair infinite combos that this thing enables like a good bit of. So like this an awful lot, simple solution to some of the format woes in standard, maybe, but also really inventive, you know, ingenious even, infinite combo piece. So love this card. Well, that's all of my favorite 15 or 16 cards from today. Really 17, because I didn't mention Slitherblade. I should at least, this guy's cool. I should put him right there. He's not great, but he's cool. Um, so really 17 cards <laughs> from today that I really, really liked. But again, if you want to see every single card that was spoiled, check the description. I've got a link down there for the entire set for you. Also, make sure you like the video if you liked it. Hit sub, hit the bell, because there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. By Monday, we'll have the pre-release guide out. The Always, in my channel, we try to make the most in-depth pre-release guides. They're usually 25, 30 minutes, but it's a lot of information. It's going to be comprehensive, so I make no apologies for that. <laughs> a couple of days after that, we'll start doing deck techs, which is the really exciting thing. I've got a few things I want to put out for you, but... As always, let me know what you want to see. I'm getting a lot of requests for red deck wins, mono red aggro, cycling decks, but if there's anything else you want to see, let me know. But in any case, you can also follow me on Twitter at SBMTGDev right there. You should do that. Share my videos, send me presents, and I will see you guys later. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.